Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Somani Ceramics Q4 SY23 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Dam Capital Advisors Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Asim Bharade from Dam Capital Advisors Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Lizanne. Uh, good evening, everyone. On behalf of Dam Capital Advisors, I welcome you all to Somani Ceramics Q4 FY23 Results Conference Call. Uh, we have the senior management team with us to take us to the results and then for the Q&A. Uh, with that, I'll hand the call to Mr. Abhishek Somani for his opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have with me my CFO here and my head of uh, uh, IR and Amay Somani in the room. Um, I would like to welcome everybody for the earnings fall of Q5 FI23 and also the year ending FI23. Uh, welcome every ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you've seen, the last year has been probably one of the most volatile years. Uh, we were hoping it to be an excellent year after the pandemic, but uh, with the war happening, the fuel prices, freight prices, etc., the volatility continued right through the year, uh, and we've seen the maximum ups and downs ever in the history of this industry. Overall market as, as it stands is uh, still muted, uh, demand is still under pressure, continues to remain under pressure. The industry size according to us is approximately 48,000 crores out of which 37,000, 38,000 crores is domestic and about 12,000 crores is uh, export. This is slated to grow uh, uh, at about 5-7% uh, next year, largely driven by export uh, as far as the total industry is concerned. We are hoping that the export would expect to reach uh, between 18 and 20,000 crore rupee levels. Uh, this year we would look at about 17, 18,000 crore rupees and next year we would be looking at about 20,000 crore rupee levels. Um, on the other thing which has been a big positive in the industry is that we've seen finally the gas prices started muting, uh, we are coming down. Uh, it's still not at the same level that the six quarter uh, earlier levels, but uh, it has definitely uh, moved down and uh, the future also looks uh, reasonable in uh, we don't see any shocks unless there's any global uncertainty which we takes it up. Now if we come to Somani, uh, on a quarter four basis uh, we've done 668 crores uh, on revenue and which is about 11% up uh, on, on Q4 22 and uh, on a console level also approximately 10.5% up. Uh, on a standalone basis our EBITDA has moved up uh, fairly reasonably. Uh, from 5.5% to 6.7%. That's largely backed on uh, fuel price increase and other operating uh, improvements which we've done. However, there has been a little bit of pressure on the value add mix, which I will talk about uh, later, which has gone down by a percent in this quarter. But overall, the other uh, operating levels and the uh, gas price has uh, given us this benefit. The tile volume stood at 17.6 uh, million, which is about 9.2% up from uh, last year's same quarter. Uh, on the console level pretty much the same. As far as the uh, uh, the year goes by, we have grown by about 18%, 2,426 uh, on a standalone basis and uh, versus 2,061. If you take the console, it is at 2,465 versus 2,083, which is 18.3% up from last year. The EBITDAs have gone down as we have had a substantial amount of pressure on uh, gas and also on our uh, GVs. So both of them have uh, put pressure on the EBITDA where you see the PVT, if you come down to the PVT level from 126 is gone to 95 and similarly the PAT has gone from 89 to 75. Whereas on the uh, standalone basis, we have maintained uh, last year's uh, uh, EBITDA, uh, in fact, it's, sorry, last year's PVT which is slightly better and also the PAT which is slightly better. The, uh, the console, uh, the reason for the console hit is on two accounts. One is on gas and largely on the joint venture. If you understand the joint venture model is we buy from them at a particular price. And here while we were able to put some uh, increases in uh, our, our selling price, 
that did not translate to increase in purchase price from our joint ventures because the joint ventures work on uh, transfer pricing, which means that what we are to be able to source from Morbi at a particular price from a non-joint venture, we generally give the joint venture partner that plus a little more. So that put pressure on the joint ventures. So uh, that was the biggest delta. And uh, our joint ventures, uh, we have many more joint ventures than uh, a lot of the other players. Therefore, that was something which, which hit the joint venture profit. And coupled with that, we also had Sumani Petrale, which for two quarters, it uh, lost money. Uh, that has stabilized, of course. Uh, so from that point of view, going forward, that will not be a loss. And even on the joint venture with the gas prices coming down, we would have a much better uh, year uh, in future. So this volatility was uh, extraordinary volatility of last year. We've never had such a big difference between the console and the uh, standalone system. So that was largely the effect of uh, the, the, the transfer pricing on the joint venture or the pricing which we took from the joint venture partner, which is why there was an extended loss on, on that account. As far as the tile revenue is concerned, uh, if you see the figures, we did about 38% uh, in ceramics. Uh, last year it was uh, uh, the same. Um, in fact, the year gone by, we've done 39% in ceramics, which is 1% up. The PVT is down from 33 to 29%. The GVT, uh, although it was up in Q3 to 33%, but in Q4 and also around the year, it's, it's at 32%. So there has been a little bit of pressure on the value add mix in the quarter four, but that's nothing major, which should get weeded out uh, towards uh, this year, and we're looking at a much better figure, even better than 33 you know, going forward. Like you know, we put in a lot of uh, capacity for value added plant, and also the max plant will start in quarter three. So all of that will further augment the value add mix. As far as hardware is concerned, uh, we did approximately 74 crores in quarter four, up 18%. And overall, also for the year, we were up 18% from 207 to 245. This segment is catch for traction, uh, but like the demand was muted, this was also muted to that extent. But this segment has caught traction, and we're looking at, at a good 20-25% uh, to 25% growth uh, in this uh, financial year. Uh, uh, on the gas price, just to give you a flavor, our gas price, current gas price is approximately 47 rupees. Uh, uh, in quarter four, it was approximately 50 rupees because uh, some of our plants were still at some higher gas pricing. Uh, so this 40, 50 rupees has come down to 47 and we're looking at even lower pricing um, going forward to so probably 43, 44 in the, uh, this month and the coming months. And the current, what I'm referring to is the April price. It's further gone down a little bit more in May. So we are hoping that some of this would be uh, retained and, and that would reflect in the bottom line going forward. Average capacity utilization in quarter four was uh, almost 90% on tiles, approximately 55% on sanitary wear. Uh, there was a stockpile up, so we had shut down uh, one small line, only the large line is running. Faucet was at about 75%. The brand spends were maintained, it was 2.5% and uh, this would be maintained going forward also. The new dealer edition for quarter four was approximately 300 and uh, sorry for the year was uh, 300 and we had about 109 showrooms which we opened uh, this year. Uh, there were some showrooms which got the exclusive showroom which got shut down but we did add 109 new showrooms uh, this year in FY23. Uh, going forward uh, uh, this, this, this quarter again we have a muted demand so we're looking at uh, uh, not a great demand scenario uh, from, from the industry, uh, as is for all the building materials. However, the guidance uh, going forward we, for uh, FY24, 23 24, on volume terms is the mid teens, largely driven by uh, the uh, volume growth and very small by the value growth. EBITDA margins uh, should improve. Uh, we should uh, be looking at the EBITDA margin, what we've achieved in quarter four and maybe add a little more onto it. There is seen, still seems to be a little bit of volatility in, in, in uh, uh, input costs, gas, etc. But we're fairly confident that if this sticks as to where it is, uh, considering that the uh, demand is muted and we may have to uh, do uh, certain incentives, etc. to prop up the volume, Therefore, we are looking at, uh, at the similar EBITDA levels a little more than that. So about 9.5% 9.5 to 10% EBITDA levels for this year if everything remains 
where it is uh, as it is in the first quarter. So here was the snapshot of our results and a snapshot of what we have uh, envisaged. Little more on next year, we are looking at more dealer additions. Our future prospects are to further augment the, uh, foot, uh, the, the footprint of dealers, so extension of distribution. So there we will be adding another three to 500 dealers uh, during the year. Uh, we would do the same ad spend. In fact, we've, uh, you would see a lot more of us uh, this year because the absolute ad spend, absolute money goes up fairly significantly, although the percentage remains at 2.5%. Uh, we are also in the process of shooting new uh, adverts uh, uh, to further um, you know, uh, increase our presence across all medias, uh, social media, digital, etc., uh, TV, uh, below the line, all of that. Uh, sanitary wear remains the focus. Uh, this year, is, our theme is to further augment the sanitary wear growth. Uh, as you all know, my brother now looks after the sanitary wear business, so there's a lot more focus on the business and a lot more uh, uh, seriousness than before uh, as key management, uh, promoter management is, is uh, now looking directly into the sanitary wear business on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is as far as our uh, snapshot is concerned. I would now open the uh, floor to any Q&A. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Viraj Mehta from Equitas PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi Abhishek. Uh, Abhishek, my first question is regarding volume growth. If you look at the domestic volume growth, even for this year, we have done significantly better. Um, and when you say that you will do mid teens, even if uh, the first quarter doesn't look great, that would imply almost 17, 18% kind of volume growth for the rest of the three quarters. Uh, what will that be driven by? Would it be driven by like new showrooms, uh, geographical expansion, or just same store sales growth you think can catch up? All of the above, uh, and also in the first quarter, uh, when we say it's 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 uh, poor demand, is poor than what we envisage it to be. But uh, April was not too bad. Uh, we had approximately a nine ten percent uh, growth in April. Uh, May is uh, pretty much the same kind of growth which we envisaging. So it won't be so bad. It's just that you know we have aggressive targets, and to grow at fifteen percent on such a large volume is not a Small number. So A, it would be all of the above which you, which you said, plus we would get approximately four months of the max capacity uh, also. Right, right. My second question is regarding uh, the fuel cost. So if, we, if I look at the commentary of the market leader, which obviously drives the prices for everyone else in the industry, uh, they have categorically said that they'll not pass on most of the gas price increases, uh, decreases. Um, and if I look at your gas price decrease from 53 rupees to 50 to early 40s, you are talking. That's a massive gas price decrease that we are looking at. Uh, but you are still guiding only for 10% EBITDA margin. It looks very counterintuitive in that regard. Not really, because uh, you know there will be price corrections with this kind of a price decrease. More we will uh, reduce prices, which means that we would also have to reduce prices. What I mentioned is that we should be able to retain some of the price uh, reductions, uh, so everything won't get passed off. So just to give you a further flavor on the gas, uh, in the north, whatever we do, we will not be under 46, 47 rupees because we still are under that contract with Gale. Unlike industry leader who has three contracts, which is Henry Hub, uh, JCC Basket, and also the uh, uh, long-term uh, RAS gas, we have only the RAS gas. So from that point of view, we are pegged to the uh, Brent. Therefore, we do not look at this coming down between 46, 47 rupees. Morbi, we look at about uh, 41, 42 rupees. And in the south, we are completely exposed to uh, 
spot currently export is uh, uh, spot is still at about 50 rupees so on a blend weighted average we are looking at about a uh, from from 50 we are looking at a 46 uh, to 47 in the immediate uh, term of course we have done a lot on biofuel also which is approximately today about 32 33 percent of our fuel mix in the north plant sure sure and my last question will be on sanitary where uh, so we are like uh, around 245 to 50 crore top line um, and if i look at i mean what's what's your aspiration because at like a 2500 crore top line it's still a very very puny part of our business aspirationally where would you want to take it over next two three years internally we're looking at in the next three three and a half years to double this and would would it be fair to say that this will be a significantly better margin business than tiles at it's a scale let's say at a scale of 500 no, crore so at 500 crores, yes, it will be, but currently it's not because obviously the volumes, uh, the uh, uh, economies of scale haven't played up. Yeah. Right. And what will be the capex for this year? Sorry, last number. A capex would be, in the, there is no uh, capex, so it's going to be routine capex of 50 55 crores. Thank you so much and best of luck, Abhishek. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Udit Gachiwala from ES Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking off my question. Sorry, Mr. Gachiwala, sir, your audio is breaking up. Uh, sir, we are not able to hear you. I'm extremely sorry. Uh, sir, may we request you to return to the question queue because we are not able to hear you. As we are unable to hear the current participant, we'll move on to the next. That is on the line of Chandresh Malpani from Nishai Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yeah, so my first question is on the export side. So how are exports pairing up, sir? Uh, can you give us uh, any number like uh, what sales uh, uh, the, like that was lost in the previous year? Uh, like any percentage on that side? I'm sorry? Sir, like uh, the, that Morbi region was started to dump in domestic market. So has that changed or uh, how is that outlook on export front? Yeah, so there's no new capacity coming in in Morbi at all this year, which means that whatever capacity has been put in, a lot of it will start getting uh, consumed in the export uh, demand which is going up. And also the real estate uh, players over here, which are basically service and more So real estate industry also keeps going up. So from that point of view, uh, I think a lot of that dumping will start getting uh, lesser and lesser and lesser going forward. Okay. Okay. So there won't be any supply overhang. Uh, we can uh, assume as of now, like uh, the new capacities are not getting added. Up. Hello. Sorry. Yeah, so just uh, wanted to understand there won't be any supply overhang, overhang in the industry. No, no, there will be. There Currently, there is a supply overhang, but that will get uh, consumed uh, during the year because no new capacity is coming up. Okay, okay. And sir, lastly, on the Nepal plant, sir, what is your outlook uh, from there? Where where, uh, where are we going to uh, uh, sell? Like, a, it would be export-oriented uh, market or how will it be? No. Nepal plant will uh, commission maybe sometime uh, late next year. It will take at least 18 months from now. And uh, to Viraj's question earlier, there would be approximately a 12 13 crore rupee investment there other than routine, but that we're not sure when it will be exactly, probably towards the end of the year, but that's fairly insignificant. Uh, and the Nepal uh, plant will be largely for the Nepal market. Okay, okay. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star in one.
A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is on the line of Keshav Garg from Counter Cyclical PMS. Please go ahead. Sir, I'm trying to understand whether uh, due to the subdued demand and high input prices during much of the last financial year, sir, uh, any capacity has shut in the industry, especially from the unorganized sector? Yes, Keshav, uh, there has been some capacity which has shut, but uh, a lot of new capacity also is coming. Uh, the capacity which shut was all the very, very old plants. Uh, as you very well know that 30% of our tile industry, uh, of the tile cost is gas. Therefore, all the uh, plants which were old obviously were not as efficient on the gas consumption as the newer ones were. It's much like a car when you buy a 10-year-old car, it is less um, competitive than a brand new car which gives you better mileage. It's literally directly proportional in a tile industry. So most of the plants which shut down were either of very small capacity, which could not survive the onslaught of the gas price increase. Their cash flows also could not uh, uh, survive the gas price increase. And as again, where you very, very well know that there's a substantial amount of tax evasion in Morbi. So these small plants, because they were selling at a large, tax, uh, large cash element, they did not have any money to pay the authorities uh, for buying cash. So those plants shut down. The second kind of plants which shut down were the ones which were very inefficient on gas. So we believe that approximately out of the 800 and something plants, approximately 70 to 80 plants uh, shut down. But there were the other plants which augmented capacity where they shut down an old kiln and put a brand new kiln in which was more efficient, was pretty much kind of compensated. In fact, there was an increase in the production capacity by 5-6%. Okay, sir. Sir, also, uh, sir, out of the total retail sales in tile sector, sir, approximately how much would be unorganized sector? So the retail sale, uh, Keshav, uh, for branded and unbranded is very, very different. For the branded players, for example, if I talk of myself and uh, uh, some other uh, industry leaders, uh, we were we would be at between 75 and 80 percent retail. I'm talking as an industry, so I am at 70. 8, 79% retail, in which I include 3% export, which is uh, basically again counted as retail because we kind of get the same amount of uh, money and it's going through dealers and no distributors. Uh, another uh, 12 to 13% is uh, government and about 7, 7.5% is uh, uh, private projects and about a percent is corporate. What I mean by corporate is the IKEA, the Zara, the Adidas and all of the organized retail of, of today's time. So that is our split and I believe industry leader and some other guys in the branded segment would be approximately at the same level. Now if you come to the unbranded sector and some of the other listed players who are very government and project focused, there it would be just the reverse where 65 to 70% would be project, uh, both government and private projects and 30-35% would be retail. I hope I have answered your question. Sure, sir. So also, sir, lastly, wanted to understand, sir, that uh, with, uh, as things look in your judgment, sir, you think that in this FY24 financial year, we'll be able to surpass our peak EBITDA of 234 crore approx that we did way back in FY17? No, if I'm talking of uh, the, um, you're talking of console EBITDA. Just one minute, yes. I'll just get yes. to that. So we are already 210, 200, 200, yeah. 200. Yeah. Yes, will we be able to? Yes, we would be able to. Yes, I just did a back of the envelope calculation. Yes. Okay, so that is very reassuring, sir. Thank you very much, and best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pranav from Equator Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good evening, sir. Thank you for taking a question. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand uh, uh, what is the target that you are uh, uh, thinking of uh, taking the GVT over next uh, contribution from GVT over next uh, three years? Uh, for the next three years? Yes, from let's say 32% uh, uh, where the contribution would be from GVT and large slabs together? Uh, closer to 40%. Okay, so uh, it's, it's actually actually the question is not how much GVT will increase because 
it's like saying that uh, you know that is the need of the hour it will increase the question is how much how can we outsmart it uh, and and take it to 40 percent under three years is, is actually the question uh, there's nothing which is stopping gvt i think the whole industry is moving only towards gvt so it's a natural uh, extension any which way so not much that would I, uh, that that, uh, that i'm doing the what i will do is to you know uh, the effort from our team would be to see how quickly we can reach it and not when the entire market reaches it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, yes, sir. And uh, sir, my next question was uh, now going forward, um, uh, uh, as uh, as you rightly said that the industry is moving towards, uh, uh, let's say, GVT and uh, large web. So uh, the, uh, going forward uh, for the overall industry, do you think that uh, the capacity additions now will move towards uh, adding of uh, uh, large slabs only, which will again lead to some uh, consolidation coming in the industry because uh, uh, that uh, all those capacities require a lot of uh, investment upfront. So you see, we are talking on one side that the industry will double in the next five years. So obviously, more capacity will come in. It's only this year that we have seen uh, less capacity or this year no capacity will come in because last year there was a huge addition. Now, we've seen in the last at least in my uh, career of 25 years, I've seen that, that this industry has always had an overhang of capacity. Every fifth year, there is one year where we'd have uh, capacity being consumed, and then the next year onwards, again, there's been an addition. So, yes, of course, the uh, investment to output ratio has uh, drastically changed because land prices have gone up, equipment prices have gone up, rupee dollar has gone up. So, from that point of view, the 100 crores, which used to give me 150 crore rupees of revenue, obviously has changed to that extent. So capacity addition although will come in, but it will come in in various different geographies. And if we had to double the industry, obviously existing plants will also augment more capacity and new plants will also come in. So both of the above will happen. So I don't see capacity not coming in. And I don't see that in the next two, three years, we will be at the same level. There has to, has to be and will have to be more capacity addition. But the, the, the salient point here is, which I had mentioned in my last call also, uh, is that uh, this time <coughs> we may witness capacity coming at different geographies uh, rather than being only concentrated. Okay, sir. And uh, sir, my last question was uh, on export. So, any uh, strategy that you are uh, uh, building up for, uh, let's say, increasing the export or participating in the export opportunity, or you'll be largely concentrating on the domestic market only? So, uh, yes, we are a domestic focus and uh, we get a premium in the domestic market. So, therefore, we will continue to keep pushing our domestic uh, presence. But export, because it's going from 12,000 to 20,000 crores, in that our share will also increase. Although in percentage terms, it may remain more or less the same, but in absolute terms, it will increase. Okay, Thank sir. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Keshav Lahoti from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Hello, sorry to interrupt, Keshav. So you are sounding very soft. Can you speak a Hello. bit louder? Is it better? Can you speak a little louder, Keshav, please? Thanks. Yeah. Is it better? Yes, please. Thank you. So, just want to understand your sales breakup between Tier 1 and Tier 2 and Tier 3 and Tier 4 down, how it has been in FY23 and how it has shaped over the last 5 years. Is it a perfect understanding the more sales are coming towards lower tier cities? Yes, absolutely. I don't have BI as to how the graph has progressed over 5 years, but uh, currently we are approximately 70 plus percent of our sales come from Tier 3, 4, 5 towns. Yes, if we include tier two, it will be probably more than 80 percent. Okay, got it. And what was your revenue mix for tiles in ceramics, PVT, and GVT? Yeah, I mentioned that earlier. Currently, uh, this year it's 39 percent ceramic, 29 percent PVT, 32 percent GVT. Okay. And uh, as you are saying, your you know GVT contribution is going to increase. Will it lead to better margins profile also? And possibly yes. maybe in next uh, two years we should see upwards of 10% for Somani? Yes. Okay. 
one last question from my side uh, how 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 is your bath fair margin in fy23 and what are your expectations in next 2 3 years i don't have it uh, off the cuff but i am happy to give it to you later okay thank you that's it thank you the next question is from the line of ashish obganlawar from investki investment advisor please go ahead yeah uh, sir wanted to know your thoughts on <clears throat> the sanitary wear part of it so what we have been understanding from the key players in this industry is that sanitary wear is more consolidated in the hands of a few branded players and uh, tile on the other hand we have several i mean so many hundreds of players there including unbranded so um, um, i mean if that is that the case uh, your uh, comments on that will be useful and secondly if we are going aggressive on sanitary wear so how we are going to make a dent into that market which probably is controlled by 3 4 5 people yes you are very right i mean we have uh, sanitary wear which is a branded play uh, and and there's less competition from the unorganized sector because this is a product which is clearly visible in somebody's home and there's a lot of pride which people take in their bathrooms and kitchens etc uh, so therefore they would uh, uh, very seldom put an unbranded product uh, it's a fairly uh, not a very expensive product to put a basic sanitary wear so from that point of view you're very very right it is in the hands of the top 5 players namely uh, jaguar sera fariwear indwear cola that's where the market is that's where you generally see 99% of the uh, market so to say figure of speech you will see uh, sorry bathroom you will see brands now the question is to get our brand recognized and our brand also in top of mind recall currently when a when a consumer is going to buy a house and he is making a bathroom he thinks of samani kajaria johnson etc a few other brands as far as style is concerned he thinks of jaguar grohe uh, and some other brands as far as uh, bathwear is concerned which is faucet and when it comes to sanitary wear your top of mind recall still largely is in the uh, indwear jaguar uh, paddy wear and uh, and sera kind of a thing so there to make a dent we will have to make our presence felt which is why uh, we need a lot more uh, concentrated effort on marketing both uh, multi nodal marketing to make sure that a consumer over the years starts looking at somani as also a sanitary wear player so from that point of view it's a long road ahead it's not going to be easy where a consumer uh, will recognize as somani as a bathroom player and not only a tile player so this is something which is only over time we will be able to change it it's not that i can i don't have the kind of money to go and uh, sponsor the ipl and get uh, eyeballs that we also make sanitary wear because that's not sustainable for us i wish we could do that but uh, so it's a long road ahead for us to get recognized in the sanitary wear and that's the biggest stumbling block and the biggest road block today where a builder also going forward he said that why should i put uh, uh, somani when i'm getting uh, indwear and pari at pretty much the same rate so that's that's something which we have to fight it out and there's no uh, uh, one answer for that so it's all about the brand rather than it. to do with the process of manufacture or supply chain or something like that not at all i mean in the family uh, my grandfather established uh, hindwear and sera so we know it we know how to produce it but it's a question of brand so it's all about the brand and the distribution distribution is still something which is under control where we have a lot of our tile dealers uh, with the uh, expansion in our sanitary wear portfolio they would be more than happy to keep our sanitary wear but it's a question of the consumer's mind there right. even my mind today if somebody had to so today if i had to paint the house i'm not really going to think of a jsw paint i'm going to think of a burger and an and an asian and why should i go anywhere else if that's available so that's the stumbling block which is which we are facing but over time obviously we will get 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 over this okay uh, so secondly um, if we were to um, i mean summarize the levers that you have uh, for fy24 on growth so we we looking at volume growth of uh, what as in double digits lower double digits yes. or uh, yes, yes. no 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 we are talking about mid teen uh, growth and obviously largely uh, from volume so we are definitely looking at 13% of volume and the margin should improve to maybe 7 8% is that a fair assumption or uh, yeah obviously because you know gas prices are better and obviously less volatility so uh, if nothing no much no other global surprises happen we you are largely correct. So can it touch the double digits there, or uh, should we not expect that? 
I don't think I would want to guide for a double digit uh, EBITDA, but uh, yes, we would be growing fairly significantly over today's EBITDA. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference, we request you to limit your questions to two per participant only. The next question is on the line of Bhavan Rupani from Investec. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, can you please give us the plant-wise gas prices during Q4 and uh, what, is the, what are the spot prices? I'm sorry? Plant-wise gas prices for Q4 and the spot prices. I mentioned that. I mentioned that. I can't give you plant-wise. I can give you region-wise. Uh, yeah. The uh, Morbi region uh, has gone down now to 45 rupees uh, kilocalorific value adjusted. Uh, the northern plant is again at 46, 47 rupees uh, uh, for the same kilocalorific value, and the south plant is currently at 56. But the south, uh, sorry, at 50. Uh, I'm sorry, at 56. Uh, the trend is that we would be uh, looking at a 50 rupee figure uh, for the south plant and approximately a 43, 44 rupee figure for the western plants and the northern plant will remain in the same region. Okay, and so what is our fuel mix in Q4? What do you mean by fuel mix? Uh, propane and uh, coal and gas. Oh. It's uh, all gas uh, and a small amount of uh, uh, coal as far as the spray dryers are concerned. And uh, in the north plant, it is 70, uh, 65, 70% gas and about 30, 35% biofuel. Okay. And sir, lastly, if you could speak uh, one, what are the uh, rates of anti-dumping duty on imports from India by Saudi, UAE and USA? I don't think there are any few, uh, any fresh anti-dumping uh, duties which have been uh, mooted. The last one was from Europe, uh, and, and in, in Europe, India got a duty of about 6-7%, which is insignificant. In fact, we are fighting with Saudi now to see if they can remove the anti-dumping duty. If not, then at least bring all the Indian players to level playing field. As you know, there are, there are one or two players from Morbi who have a significantly lower anti-dumping duty uh, to Saudi. So, we are, we are hoping that they bring everything on a mean rate so everybody then gets a chance to export to Saudi. All right, that's helpful, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Rajesh Ravi from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, my first question pertains to your FY24 guidance. You said that 95 to 10% EBITDA margin is what you're looking at, right? Yes. And for ma volumes, any guidance, which yes. I would have missed? I mentioned that approximately uh, th th out of the mid-teens, approximately 12-13% should come to volume. But okay. that is up and down. Okay. Early in the call, you mentioned that the industry, both domestic plug export together, should grow at six to seven percent, and you also mentioned that the export numbers from twelve thousand will go to twenty thousand. So, most of uh, are you expecting flattish number in the domestic markets consumption basis? Uh, uh, not completely flattish number. So, we are looking at uh, 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 let us say at the industry currently. We are looking at approximately uh, 4,000, 5,000 crore rupee increase out of which uh, 4,000 should come through export and 1,000, 1,000 and a half should come through uh, domestic uh, is what we are looking at. Because so, so more we mm -hmm. largely focusing on uh, exports. Correct. Uh, but given that the cash prices uh, corrections will be sharp in more we, and given that these players are also tested success in the domestic markets, do you see that uh, if you know even if demand picks up the pressure from the domestic uh, from the Morbi players will remain elevated and that is why you are not factoring in uh, scope so, uh, of any Morbi price increase? Are largely focused on the uh, non-retail part. They largely focus on the private builder, and I do believe there will be a mm -hmm. much larger growth, uh, maybe 18 to 24 months down the line, because a lot of the new projects have uh, been commissioned which in wherein the tile will go in only 18 to 20 months later okay 
and for exports would be how much for you in terms of your volume uh, for FY23? But approximately 50 crore this year. Oh, 50 crore. Okay, and uh, any uh, you're not looking at, at this market aggressively. I believe a, a few years back, 15 percent of your revenues were from exports. No, no, no. Our revenue never exceeded 3.5 percent of exports. Oh, okay. Okay, so my bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so exports uh, is where you are not looking to be aggressive at all. Focus is on domestic tier two, tier three, as you yeah, mentioned. Not competitive in export because uh, the problem is in export. Morbi uh, uh, gives extended credit plus very, very pricing. So therefore, export is never. We never get uh, uh, the premium we we get in India. So therefore, we are never competitive in exports. Mm -hmm. Okay. And did you mention uh, earlier in the call some hundred odd showroom you added in FY23? Sorry? Number of showrooms added in FY23, you mentioned around 100 showrooms. We added 300 dealers net addition and approximately 109 showrooms. But I don't have the net addition of showrooms because some showrooms did close down also. So, okay. Uh, and are these exclusive showrooms? Yeah, yeah. 109 exclusive showrooms. So our total okay. figure of exclusive showrooms are now excess of 400. Oh, okay. So that's a sizable increase in terms of your uh, footprints. Yeah, on the exclusive front and also on the dealer front. Right. Great, sir. Thank you. We'll come back in queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karan Bhatelia from Asian Market Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, sir, can you give some breakup on the 170-175 crores of KPX that we did in this year, uh, plant-wise and capacity-wise? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to make it easier. Yeah, Karan. So net capex addition is with respect to that 11 billion square meter capacity which we added uh, added during the year. So that was starting with the, the small ticket size of around 40 crore rupee in Northern India modernization plan, Northern, Northern India plant, wherein we did the modernization of one line. Then we added the larger capacity, which was so money yesterday. Uh, and then third one was the salt plant doubling. So all these three put together, the gross addition was almost 300 crore rupee. So 175, what you are looking at is the, uh, I would say, net block number. So if you look at the detail annual report, the gross block addition, you will find 300 crore rupees. So, and that is a split divided between these three plants, the larger ticket and around 40, 50 crore rupees, the maintenance ticket. Right. right. So, so for this year, nothing apart from the Nepal plant? No, nothing. Nothing so far on Nepal plant. It is yet to go. Yeah. No, so, so for FI24, it's only the maintenance capex and some investment at the Nepal plant, right? And some small maintenance, some small investment in the Nepal. Yeah, yeah. Also, can you split up the bathware revenues uh, each and fewer and faucet uh, and and bio wide growth? That's it. It's, uh, it's in the ratio of sixty forty. So we did about hundred uh, CR in uh, bathware, little more than hundred CR. Sixty forty. 64 and you were in 44 bucks. 100 crores in bathway, in Vortex. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Dwanil Desai from Total Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Abhishek. Good evening. Uh, able to hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, my question is: uh, So this year we are expecting a muted uh, domestic uh, demand uh, outlook for the industry, and we are still aspiring to grow at you know whatever 13 percent. And you also mentioned that the industry size itself may double in next five years. So tying this up, do we think that from from a fairly large base that we have, we'll be able to outpace that 15% growth, uh, you know, and grow at a slightly higher pace, 17, 18, 20% over the next three, four, five years. You know, we, we if I can't talk so far uh, for five years, but we're pretty sure that the industry will double. I mean, the calculation is very simple, sir. Uh, we are looking at approximately 10% urbanization uh, from the current number. So if, if we look at 10% urbanization even till 2030, which is six years, 
uh, we're looking at approximately 150 million, 160 million people being organized. Uh, if you if you if you drill that down on new housing to be made and schools and colleges and malls and all of that to be made for the 160 million people to get organized, you'll finally arrive at this figure. So that is what we are uh, focusing on. That's what the guidance from the government is that you know 10% will get urbanized going forward. Uh, we are hoping for the same. Now, if we took it top to top of this year, we are looking at uh, uh, you know garnering little extra market share in the domestic market, plus the getting a little bit of the uh, of the uh, expansion which happens in the market. So both of that combined, uh, we are quite confident. Of course, I must say that the uh, the year has uh, started with a, a lackluster kind of a, a demand scenario, but we were kind of export, expecting this for the next six months. Uh, we all know that all building materials, especially that's where the rural India is still bleeding. I think this pain is to is there uh, till the end of the monsoon. We're hoping that after that uh, it should things should improve. Now we've been in the same scenario actually since uh, August, where uh, demand just fell off the curve last August. So we do believe that. Uh, hopefully the demand, uh, muted demand won't last uh, more than 6-8 months uh, going forward which means uh, till the next September, October and after which we believe that the demand should start becoming slightly better. So that's what we are hoping, hoping for and that is why we are uh, 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 you know, internally taking a target and also guiding for a double digit uh, kind of a volume growth. We also have put in 11 million capacity and 4 million more gets added so need to sell that. So all of it put together, uh, there's a, there is a significant amount of pressure on us to make sure that this is delivered. Okay. And uh, you guided for the margin uh, for this year. Uh, but, uh, you know, let's say, uh, so let's say if you want to go back to our earlier margins of around 12%, does it mean that the gas prices have to come down to earlier levels to get us back to that margin? Or you think that even slightly lower than where we are today, we can still get to that margin with scale and efficiency improvement and everything. This is a new normal now is kind of a 40 to 45 rupee gas price depending on where the uh, Brent is. I don't think we can go back to the 33, 34 level uh, prices ever unless the Brent had to really crash. Uh, and, and also do not forget there is a reasonable amount of foreign exchange component which anyway has moved up by 20% because the rupee dollar has appreciated over the last two years uh, by 20%. So both of that combined, the new normal is looking at 40. So largely our, our margins will be led by uh, uh, maybe slight decrease in uh, gas price, but more from uh, operating levels, uh, extended uh, better capacity utilization, better value added mix, like I said, G more of GVT and also uh, with the economy in this case. So it would be largely dependent on that. I think the new normal for gas is already pretty much there. Maybe there could be an 8-9% reduction from the current levels uh, overall in the gas prices. Okay, got it. Thank you. That's it for me. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. close the call. Uh, sure, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Somani, would you like to add any closing remarks? Yes, thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, looking forward to a better year uh, after having faced all kinds of volatilities in the last year. We do believe that uh, there is a little bit of pain left as far as demand is concerned, but uh, the companies have been very focused on the balance sheet. Uh, we do not wish to deter from the site of having a poorer balance sheet, so we want to make our balance sheet even stronger. These issues, we of course, taken a fairly aggressive uh, target. Uh, these issues of muted demand, etc., keep coming. But overall, we uh, are sure of better governance uh, and also of keeping the balance sheet under check. So if that is there, we are very hopeful for the very good next uh, few years to come. Thank you so much. Looking forward to the Q1 uh, call. Thank you, members of the management team. 
Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of DAM Capital Advisors Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.